Hi, my name is Erin Pasco. I'm married to see this is not a spoiler free review. But if you're like me and you're messy and you just like getting the tea, guys, I literally went on a hunt for Requi spoilers. <laughs> what, at 1 a.m. on May 15th? I. I just, I'm trash, and I could not find any. Now, I'm so frustrated, but here we are. I finished the book. I know everything. Obviously, that's why I'm reviewing it. This is such a dumb monologue. <laughs> Hi, man. I recently read Victoria Aveyard's War Storm, which we had to say this war caused quite the storm in my heart. I really, because I did notice some things that had, like, kind of, like, side eye. But, like, really? And some things were just not all that wrapped up are just not wrapped up all that well to me and so you will definitely hear about that but yeah I still gave it a four out of five stars simply because I enjoyed this book I binge read it I have not been read a book in the longest a lot of new releases this year I have not really been enjoying which is kind of like sad and you know this book was just a nice breath of fresh air I was with characters that I knew and loved, and I knew I loved this author's writing. And honestly, I just had this feeling that I would not be disappointed. And I wasn't. I was very much satisfied with the ending for the most part. And I just, I, I really liked this book. And that's why I gave it a four out of five stars. Yeah. So we start off, and we're with Mare and Farley. And, you know, Mare just had her heart broken. We're basically starting off exactly where Cage Cage left off because that's what Aviar does. Mayor and Farley are having this long conversation, but two things kind of just stood out to me. One of them is being Ptolemus, who I thought was Ptolemus. Like, I I don't know, solid peas, solid, solid. <laughs> I don't know, I just forgot that silent peas exist. And, you know, I eventually I asked my sister, am I saying this right? She's like, no, it's a silent pea, like pterodactyl. Right? Right? Is, is it parent? Is that what she said? pterodactyl so you know i was just kind of like shook about that was not expecting that but it's tall in the sky so in the last book king's cage mir basically promised evangeline that i will not kill your brother because if you forgot thomas killed shade bear which i was not that pressed about but people were heartbroken i didn't feel like we were close enough for me to be heartbroken about that but hey anywho <laughs> He killed Shade Barrow, Mary's closest sibling, the father of her niece. <laughs> Evangeline is not a dumb girl. In order for her to free Mary, she of course has to promise not to kill her brother. But she did not say the Scarlet Guard would kill her brother. She said that she would kill her brother. And that's basically what we're discussing in this chapter? This conversation? Yeah. And Farley's just saying that, you know, I have to try because that's the father of my daughter and that's my lover. And if I don't try, I just kind of can't forgive myself. And am I getting this right? She said that she'll never be able to look at herself and Clara if she not, doesn't try. So basically it was right. I mean, kind of. And, you know, I thought this was interesting because I just... I didn't want him to die because I actually kind of like Tali. I enjoyed his and Evangeline's relationship and I liked that he just wasn't this all around cruel character and eventually I just kind of want him to live because I feel like Evangeline's life for the most part kind of sucks and I just think that he was making it better. <laughs> And also, it has like been this very predictable subplot, and so I'm happy that we did not execute this. Number two about this conversation is the whole entire Calamere thing. And, you know, Mare's just saying, well, I broke promises to him, he broke promises to me, and he also made promises to the crown and to his father. And I just, I never truly thought Cal was suited for the crown. And I know there's been, like, a lot of times where I'm like, oh, he's now in King Prince Miller, you know, he was shaped for this. I was just kind of, like, happy that Mary didn't see things so, like, black and white. Especially because we all know that Mary's historically has been a pretty selfish character. She definitely had her character arc at what happened in King's Cage to her, her being locked up with the Silent Stone. Which, so went on Tumblr, <laughs> which I will link their posts. I'm sorry that I did not, like, know, like, your Tumblr name. They kind of just really opened my eyes to the fact that Silent Stone was used as a drug by Maven. And basically, he's just using it to silence Alara's voice because it pains him. It, it's making him feel numb, and as they put it, giving him some mental clarity. And, you know, honestly, Maven, I never, like, I always have reflected on him, 
But he's such a complex character that is really hard to just chip away at everything. So I was just very much impressed and intrigued by their thoughts and opinions. And it kind of broke my heart. <laughs> and so, you know, after this, we start having a whole entire council about what to do about Maven's retreating forces. And I don't even want to talk about that. I don't want to talk about the fact this whole, like, Monfort thing. Let's go to Monfort. Mira is so petty. I love her. <laughs> Can't wait to see it myself. Girl, bye. You know, I was excited because I wanted to see Monfort. Wanted it in the council chambers, but I more so wanted it just in, you know, regular old society walking down the street and seeing a red and a silver married together. And, you know, we didn't really ever get that, which was one thing I felt was kind of, like, missing from this book. And, you know, eventually she's enjoying herself, especially since Cal starts to go. Which I'm like, Cal, honey, you just do it exactly what I want to do all the time. I love you. I love you. I was like, I'll just go and represent myself because I have, like, the natural curiosity. I was like, Cal, you are, like, so basic. I'm sorry, honey, but you have no curiosity in your heart. The Kingdom of the Rift is like, oh, well, I'll send an envoy from the Kingdom of the Rift. And I mean, he's like, no, not totally. I'm like, eventually. You really think he's about to sit for Ptolemus? Not Ptolemus, oh my gosh. <laughs> I wish he knows this her. She gets so bad. And I think that was probably like one of my favorite scenes throughout this whole entire book. Mira's like going kind of crazy about this. She's laughing and she's just like, wow, wow, wow. I cannot believe this is happening. This is some cruel joke. How dare the universe do this to me? <laughs> and this is when we start this whole... Tiberius, call him Tiberius, which I ha I was like rolling my eyes at this, like you're so petty all of the time. So now we're calling Cal Tiberius, which whenever I read that, I was like so caught off guard, like what are we doing? <laughs> all the Tiberius I know are dead, but okay. <laughs> Mary and Cal are like split up for the first half of this book, and yet I still think I enjoy them more than I've ever had before while they were like being fussy kittens <laughs> my favorite scene to pass between them was when Tyson was helping Mare put on like her halter strap thingy majigger throughout this book Eve is kind of struggling with wanting to please her family excluding the colors for the most part people are true to their colors their families the silvers are and she knows what's to be expected of her but now she's really struggling with wanting to be of Elaine it's our life she's strange being a queen a princess. Now her family has kind of formed this themselves. And her and Ptolemus and Elaine kind of this whole entire thing, okay, Elaine, you're gonna marry Ptolemus and like you'll be his wife, you'll do things that need to be done, but we're still gonna be together. So that's just kind of like our way of solidifying our relationship and the fact that nobody can ever like drag us apart. But then there's Cal and she kind of feels this annoyance for Cal because you know, throughout this book, or at least the first half, she's saying, well, no, throughout the book, <laughs> she's saying, I wish he would love her enough as much as I love Elaine to give up the crown, because then she'd be free to be with her as long as she wants. She soon realizes that even if she doesn't marry Cal, her father is always going to view her as being a pawn in this whole entire game, that she's never going to have her freedom. And we especially see this whole entire struggle of knowing what you want and then knowing what you're meant for when she goes to Montfort because Davison is kind of like sneaky he knows what to say to get to people and he mentions his husband and you know eventually thinks that she's hearing wrong and I didn't think there were like laws for reading gay marriage I'm not sure if there's actual laws or just societal expectations in Norta so that was kind of one of my questions but you know she's still thinking like what a husband and seeing them together truly just kind of hurts her and Davidson is telling her you know like you have a spot here if you come here you'll be an honored guest and we really see her struggle with this knowledge and then eventually the knowledge of knowing that her father is going to die so meanwhile we're seeing through Iris's point of view which I really I hate at my Iris's POV we have five of them there was Mare and Evangeline and Cal and Maven and Iris and Iris is perhaps one of the most boring people I've ever read you know, like, I wasn't, I didn't even hate Iris. I didn't like Iris. She just kind of existed. And I kind of wanted her to die just so I would be put out my misery of reading her. And whenever I saw her page numbers come up, <laughs> I would just flip throughout the pages, count like, oh, gee, 14 pages of Iris. And I would cry, but I knew it was necessary to read her. And in this POV of hers, 
we were basically learning about everything that Maven's planning and conniving and scheming about. And we're also learning about what she's planning and conniving and scheming about, which is basically us Licklander queens, we want Norta and we know that they're weak. She's gonna let them tear each other apart. Then we'll step in. Which is not at all a clever idea, but okay, Iris. And you know, they're meeting up with the Payat Mont King or Prince Bracken. Prince Bracken. And remember, Davison and the Montfort government took Bracken's kids. So I kind of already know what we're scheming about. Because the fact that Montfort ever, like, I get why they thought they had the kids in the pocket. But they should know, like, when when you offend someone's colors, you're dead meat. Lee, Maven, and Iris are agreeing, we'll get your kids back in order to solidify this alliance because we want to win this war. And he's like, okay, fine, sure, awesome. And, you know, I was expecting this full attack, but that's not what we go for at all. We're going for this top secret mission by hiring raiders. But before I get to that, the bison scene. <laughs> We're having this little dinner. It's gonna be like super awkward and tense. So I'm thinking, how is this gonna go? So of course, Cal chooses the seat next to Mayor. Kurt Modern, he says something very interesting. He says this. A different species, closer in relation to the cattle we know. Bigger by far, better in taste. Blah, 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 blah. You never look a, you never look a live bison in the face in Colorado cattle. That I can assure you. An interesting thing, the bison and the cow, so similar, two branches of the same tree, though entirely different from one another, and separate as they are, if I ask that the two species can be, they can live alongside each other just fine, mingling their hairs, they can even breed, and everybody just kind of goes wild. <laughs> like, man, and cow are just like playing it cool, whatever, and I'm just thinking, Carmenon, you are as shady and sneaky as your cousin and I love you. But yes, these raiders are these silver people. So yes, back to the raiders. There are these silvers who are basically mad because Montfort decided to think that all people are equal. I think this attack was executed very interestingly. The stuff is going down, pie needles are being used as these bullet type things, and mirrors being silenced by the silencer people. Iris and friends are retrieving the children and that's great and stuff and they killed these two red kids in order to get them which I was kind of sad at him because I feel like they would have been totally fine without doing that but hey. And then finally we come to the big day and we're going to have to present to the Montfort government about why they should help us. And I kind of knew they were going to help us in the first place. Like eventually kind of figured that out too like there's just all just like kind of like a stage, a setup. But you know they're interrogating them and they're asking for like what are your thoughts about Tiberius Coborn? And Farley's like, I care very little about Tiberius Kolar, but I'm like, girl, I do. If he gets killed, <laughs> I'm going to blame you. <laughs> this whole entire mayor and cow thing, and eventually wants to be even like, at least they're being the biggest mayor and cow shipper, which did not see coming. And she devises this whole entire scheme to get them back together. I was just asked Samara to spar with me in the workout room, and then the rest of us will leave and not be alone together and talk to each other. That's really not a bad idea, because you know Cal's not about to leave while Mary's going to get pummeled, because Cal's just predictable. Which, <laughs> Maven literally predicted every single thing Cal did in this book, and I thought that was hilarious. Cal, honey, we need to branch out. <laughs> so Maven and I are take the Payette Mount base, and after interviewing, you know, all the prisoners, we're leaving, and we're hearing this guy say, does someone say my name? And <laughs> Maven's like, mayor and I was lost. <laughs> I predict everything. So if something happens I didn't predict it, I must have just skipped a sentence. So I, you know, I'm turning the pages because for some reason I refuse to think that an author could get one over me when in reality Aaron, have you ever considered that's maybe what authors try to go for? Like no Aaron honey authors do this thing where sometimes they sneak one over you and you're surprised and they really like it because it has people more intrigued about what's going on in their book and no I said I guess that. So maybe I just missed the meeting where they said this was going to happen but no. I did not. Scar Guard lays a bunch of bombs in the Payette Mont base and they basically agree we won't blow you up if you let all these prisoners free and that happens and that's great and wonderful. Save the day. The mayor's like hey let's shut down one of the slums let's shut down Newtown and we get Cameron back in the picture which I was totally totally taking Cameron over Iris 
I mean, I just, I hate it, Iris. I felt Cameron a bit annoying, but eventually I learned to love her. And I really did love her and enjoy her. And I missed her so much during this book. <laughs> so I was very happy to see her. And her and Kalorn, like, as soon as they started bantering, I was like, OMG, they'd be so good together. And they're now they're together. And like, OMG, I want to have a bunch of babies and be happy. And Mary's auntie married to their kids. And I'm just, I'm excited for them. The Electron successfully shut everything down. Everything is fine. Everything is cool until of course <laughs> Kalorn ends up getting hurt I'm like Kalorn it would be you like I love Kalorn but it, it's it would be him and he ends up breaking his ribs and coughing up blood and we just think he's about to die and I also be really upset <laughs> like Kalorn really one of the most innocent people here Kalorn but you know while Mary's being healed she learns about what's going down in Harbor Bay so her and the electrons and everybody else that wants to come they just get to step it we need to go help them out pretty much just sees Cal fighting Iris he literally almost dies and this is kind of of course what's going to drive back Cal and Mary together because they basically reach this conclusion you know like I can't betray what I believe in what I stand for but I also can't turn away and betray you because I love you and they're back together kind of ish. The pretty much decided to not decide anything at all oh my god and to stay together until everything goes down to see how long it lasts which is not very long at all we're having this meeting with maven and he has to silence down there for to numb him maybe also for a bit of protection and you know we nothing is accomplished maven's not going to surrender cal's definitely not going to surrender we learn about what exactly the agreement between iris and julian and annabelle was which is basically you give us maven and we give you volo and salim ira and the war for Narta is apparently over and you know Cal and Mary are seeing what this means and so is Ma for seeing what this means with Narta and everyone's really stepping back. They're saying we're not about to support a country that we purposely diminished in our own land a long time ago. Why would we do that? Why would we help you get your crown back from Lakelanders? John shows up who, John, we get some closure on him because for the longest time I just wonder, I didn't think he was ever like truly a bad person per se it's funny because i remember maris like thinking about like you know like, when did this all start did it start with kaloran crying to me did it start as soon as eventually tried to basically kill me at queen shrew now no when it's all started it started when john decided to push that guy <laughs> and kill him <laughs> how does promise you know fair wages in the conscription you can choose your job and this it's not the smartest move. This is obviously a very honorable move. He's basically taking one step toward equal rights. But it's not the smartest move considering the fact that we're about to go to war with the Lakelanders. So while I like I love that he made that decision, I could just see things going downhill. And that's why I'm very happy Josh showed like, hey, we're going to lose this war. The Sky Guard really needs to go back there and convince Montfort to go back there, because if you don't the world is going to be worse. You're not, nothing's going to change for a really long time. They have a few weeks time and in this few weeks Cal's coordinated but he, and he has the final step in his character arc and it's pretty much reading all of his mother's diary entries and learning that she didn't want a warrior king. He wanted, she wanted him to be something different, something more and he was going to be, end up being exactly that and I think that's kind of what made him realize that something needs to change and he did it for him and for his mother, which I really liked and Mara also really liked. Because I feel like if he would have said no to the crown just for her, it would have been romantic, but it wouldn't have been as powerful. And, and it also would have made him as honorable, so I really liked how that was executed. Mary does commit to Scarlet Guard and Mount Fred to go back and help. And this whole entire war is happening. The Lake Lander Queens, they... They're nymphs. They have control of the water. And Archeon has a lot of it. And they're pretty much just losing the war. And you want to learn about these super cool, well, I interpret them as submarines, that the late lander queens cannot stop or control. They retreat. They retreat this battle. Although the war is not over. And now it's kind of my thing. I want them dead. <laughs> I want them dead. I want that problem solved. I mean, we do know, because of John, we do know that for the most part, everything is going to be okay with Norta, at least. For the most part, because of John, that everything's going to be okay with Norta. I mean, the Lake Land Queens are never really going to conquer it, and that we're going to be fine. But still, 
I kind of felt like, oh, they're gonna come back though, so. Like while we put one nail in the coffin, the coffin was truly completed, guys. And in the epilogue, we learned that Cal's officially not the king anymore, Norta is playing his republic, and learned that Merit and a couple others are returning to Montfort, and that eventually is also going to be Montfort. Kind of like side eye and mentioning just a little bit. Like I get that she just wants to live in peace with Elaine, but it's like you really couldn't help at all. <laughs> she said peace. Merit and Merit does leave Cal. She kind of is taking. A break. I wouldn't want to say that they broke up. It's more like a break kind of thing where I need time to figure out who I am and what I want to do because I just I don't really know anymore. You know, Cal Baby is really sad because this girl's leaving him. But he's like, okay, fine, take as much time as you need. And we're assuming that they're going to wait for each other. And you know, Mary does say she's going to go back, but still, I just want to know: Are we going to have these little fire bender, lightning bender children? Because that's kind of what I wanted, running across the field everywhere, but whatever Gisa gives us this nice little closing with bison again and it's pretty much just you know the bison were killed they were slaughtered but they came back they replenished and now they're fine and i'm taking that as eventually everyone okay and that was obvious symbolism for the fact that the universe will rebuild itself things are going to end up okay and that was pretty much just symbolism for the fact that the universe, the world will rebuild itself and that eventually all the puzzle pieces are going to fall together. And I really did. And, you know, and that made me feel very content with this book. And it made me very hopeful for the future. And that really did just make me very content for this book and it made me very hopeful for the future. And honestly, I think that was a nice, very cool closing. So I really enjoyed War Story by Victoria Aveyard. I hope that you did too. And I hope that you liked and commented and subscribed. And I will see you next week. Bye.